please welcome the stage the star of Bill Martha Howe Douglas and the stars and co-writers Ben Wilbond and Lawrence Rickard. Martha, I didn't shake your hand. I'm so sorry. So, hello. Yeah. Welcome all. Thank you. Hello. How are, how are we all? All good? Yeah, really good. Excellent. Really Excellent. well. Uh, ben and Larry, I'm going to start with you, actually, because you're the writers of this as well. Yes. Uh, yes uh, when did the idea first come to you? Because uh, I believe you're responsible for all Shakespeare's works as well. Is this, <laughs> yeah. is this where it came from? Uh, yeah, we, we give him some credit, but um, <laughs> it was mainly us. I don't know, it came from a couple of different things. We, uh, we wanted to do... We, we talked about doing a film for a long time, and it made sense um, because we wanted to do a multi-character comedy. And there's a lot of kind of setting up story involved in doing that. Um, so we wanted a character where you didn't have to use a lot of the first act to tell people who he was and what he did. Mm. And Shakespeare, as soon as you say the name, people know who that is and what it means. But also he's got this little tantalising uh, hole in his, in his life where you know, historians know that he's a young married man living in Stratford and then they pick him up and they know that he's obviously m writes all these great works in London but they don't know what happens between the two so you mm. can put anything in that gap okay. and so we put that <laughs> <laughs> and Ben who, who had, the first, who had the, the first inkling of this idea? well it was actually so our, our director Rich Bracewell came uh, to me first I, I, I've known him for years and he said you you really love films, don't you? You really want to get into films, want to make a film. Let's, you know, we, we should do that with the Horrible Histories gang. And it's like, yeah, we should, absolutely, let's do that. Easy. And then he just said, Shakespeare. Yeah. And then, and then I went, oh yeah, you're right, absolutely, it should be Shakespeare, mm. for those very reasons. But it's yeah. just, it's, in history, I think it's possibly the best place to start. Otherwise, we, it would have been, from the team of Horrible Histories, the Civil War comedy. And you go, oh, okay, I've got to think about the Civil War for a bit here. Yeah. It doesn't work quite as well. Yeah, but that's next. It's not, don't worry. <laughs> uh, Martha, when did you get involved? I mean, were these guys going off and, and writing it, or did they keep you, the rest yeah. of the cast, in, in we were well? We were aware that they were writing um, when we were doing Horrible Histories Series 3, was it? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. And, um, thank you, Ben. And, um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they, we got involved on, on one of the early drafts. We all sat around the table and, and sort of read it and loved it and went, yeah, we'll be in it. So. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it happened. And thank you for saying that You're you would be very in it. Welcome. <laughs> and can you all talk about who you play? And which I know is, is tricky when it comes to your projects because you play everybody. But uh, Martha, let's start with you because you play Anne Hathaway principally in this, yes, don't you? Yes, principally. And then I also have um, one of the ladies in waiting in Queen Elizabeth's court. Um, and uh, what else have I got? Oh. Play, play. Well, collector? body, yeah, the body course, the body collector who um, is a sort of peasant woman uh, that collects up all the bodies that have died of the plague. Um, so quite different to Anne Hathaway. <laughs> <laughs> do you do a lot of research for something like this? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> We've kind of got a lot of experience of um, playing those sort of roles from horrible histories. Okay. So um, no, it just comes. It comes with the uh, with the hairy moles and everything. You just <laughs> <laughs> you're in character, so it's fine. <laughs> and uh, and Ben, who do you play principally in this? Principally, I play King Philip II of Spain. <laughs> um, he was a character that was, for me anyway, sort of pre-existing. In that I I used to do a when I was just starting out and doing lots of uh, Edinburgh shows and. London circuit shows of character comedy. Uh, I used to do this um, uh, Colombian drugs baron. Don't ask me why. <laughs> I just used to do this. I just really loved the idea. Because I watched Usual, Usual Suspects when it came out. And I, just, I just adored that movie. Right. I just thought, that'd be great to do a sort of slightly incomprehensible Spanish uh, drug trafficker. Right. <laughs> Seems um, fair. And it went, you know, went down pretty well. And then, so the voice was already in my head for this sort of Spanish villain rogue and then we started writing Phil and this voice came out again I went oh yeah of course it's going to be Julio yeah. was his original name oh, really? Julio okay. San Salvatore yeah. and I it, yeah it was really really fun to write because he was sort of already pre-existing in my head so you had the character already just before putting on the tash and the, the yeah that's and right that's right uh, well obviously all of that you know we did a little bit of research on mm. King Phil yeah but you know he was already there, really. 
because we, we, we were talking earlier on about how historically accurate the film actually is. So despite Martha doing no research, I mean, yeah, no, Mar- Martha, did, Martha really let the side down. <laughs> um, but I mean, the rest of us got pretty it. heavily involved. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, we kind of, we tried to tread a line with research that we wanted the kind of backdrop of the film to feel like it was really historically accurate and in terms of the design and the kind of political backdrop, what was happening at the time with King Philip, you know, King Philip was mounting multiple attacks on the Queen and we'd already had the Armada and was genuinely trying to unthrone her and uh, turn England back to a Catholic country mm. and all of that. And then at either end of the film, you've got these kind of historical um, bookends in terms of Shakespeare's life. So everything going on behind the story and at either end of it, are we, we researched quite meticulously. And then into that, we put this kind of ridiculous caper. Mm. So it's like, you know, it's like having a really nice backdrop in front of which you put idiots. And that's kind of, um, <laughs> yes. how, how we like to work. Mm. Is that the attitude to all your work, just add idiots? Is that yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, just, just yeah. add idiots. Would actually be a really good name for Just us. add idiots. Just add idiots. We'll idiots. That, we should that, yeah. 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 What should yeah, our group name be? Put that, in the, uh, <laughs> put that in the notebook. <laughs> That's great. That's true. Because there's no collective name for you guys at the moment. No, that's I mean, true. There's, you know, there's, everyone refers to the Pythons or the Kids in the Hall, but there's no. So we, we, we know, should, we'll run a competition. Yeah. If anyone has any ideas, you'll, you'll be getting a chance <laughs> to ask now. questions later on. So if you do have any ideas, then, <laughs> then do let us know. Uh, let's have a look at a clip now. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, Ben as King Philip, um, and in this scene also is Damien Lewis. I don't know if you want to explain about that. Um, about how we got. How about we got how Damien Lewis and who he plays. Well, Damien plays uh, Sir Richard Hawkins, who was, again, uh, uh, an actual courtier who Elizabeth sent off as, uh, on the high seas as a privateer. They call them privateers. And basically, they were pirates. And they would, they would sail around looking for Spanish uh, bullion ships, raid them and nick all their gold and bring them home. Right. So that's how Elizabeth was, you know, uh, creating a big war chest and funding, you know, uh, funding the country. But, of course, <coughs> we couldn't afford a, uh, <laughs> a 16th century warship. So um, we, uh, we had to make him a sort of, um, uh, like a sort of uh, cat burglar, <laughs> which is what you're about to see. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, Damien Lewis and Ben in action. Enjoy. So... Um, Damien Lewis there obviously is a yeah. special guest star. I mean, right. how it's intriguing to me that none of you played uh, Hawkins as well. But how do you decide who plays which roles in the things that you write and I think when you that, bring people we, in? We always talked about there being some cameo roles in it. Apart from anything else, sometimes practically there's only so many times you can be us in the same scene without it <laughs> causing a nightmare with shooting. There's a, there's a bit in the film where I have to punch myself where we couldn't sort of quite get out of that. But also we always talked about Elizabeth as being uh, a cameo role because it was such a because Martha had played uh, Elizabeth sort of so memorably in in horrible histories and we were doing such a different version of her mm. that I think it would have been odd to have that you know the same actor playing a different version of the same character and so we talked about Elizabeth briefly we talked about it being played by a man and it being kind <laughs> of a drag role yeah. you know but uh, then really quickly we um, you know we sort of set our sights on on Helen McCrory. And then top of our list for Hawkins was, um, was Damien. Um, but yeah, we kind of, those two, we'd always had earmarked to be, to be cameos. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's nice to... Um, we kind of wanted... To, we, did, we did want a cameo for Richard Hawkins because, because um, I just really wanted to open the film with a big star who everyone goes, oh, Damien Lewis is in it. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he was a good sport about that. Okay. <laughs> How long was he on set for? Hmm? How long was he on set for? Until he was on set for a day. <laughs> he was... Um, I mean, he's, uh, he's an actor who's really scrabbling around for work. <laughs> so <clears throat> we let him have a day. Uh, no, he's, he, he basically found, found uh, this time to travel up to set. And it, yeah. and it was like, quickly, yeah. we've got to shoot everything really quickly. He, he was <laughs> everyone was really nervous. It's like, come on, it's... It, yeah, he, he, was, just, room. he was just <laughs> coming off Homeland and just about to start Wolf Hall. So, uh, you know, we were really doing him a favour. <laughs> also, also he, had, he had the coolest thing. So he walked onto set and everyone was like, it's Damien Lewis, Damien Lewis, Damien Lewis. And he, had, he sort of sat in a chair 
and he had a, um, a flask. And seasoned actors know, you know, you bring your flask to set of your favorite drink, so it's always there. So you can yeah. And his was just a CIA flask. It was like, <laughs> you're pretty cool. Contents classified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, What's Mar- in there? <laughs> soup, hot soup. <laughs> uh, Martha, did you give uh, Helen McCrory tips on how to play Queen Elizabeth? <laughs> no, I don't think I should have done that. Um, no, she was actually really nervous. She said to us on the first day, she was like, am I, am I doing okay? It's just really weird because you're Helen McCrory. Um, but no, she's fantastic in the film. She was a great addition, definitely. Yeah. And did she bring, in the same way, uh, that, that sense of uh, a guest star coming in and a, a sense of almost a, an outsider to the group? Because I imagine you're all pretty much ingrained now. You know your, your routines and your habits. I think, and I think that's what made her nervous, weirdly. And of course, we don't see ourselves, you know, we, we like to be sort of inclusive and, and feel that people can join in and have fun with us. But of course, Helen had to ask, she had to ask that, so what? Am I, am I doing okay? I said, yes, my God. yes, because you're Helen McClory and I really want to ask you about James Bond. <laughs> um, which I did, and that was good. I'm glad I did, because I got some really good um, anecdotes. Okay. There's a, <clears throat> in the film, I, I spend a lot of time sitting next to her on the throne in the, the final act, and it, obviously that took a few days to shoot, mm-hmm. and we just sat there nattering. She was telling me some brilliant stories, which I can't repeat <laughs> ever. Martha, did you get any unrepeatable stories from Helen McCrory I as well? I didn't, no, yeah. I didn't. I missed those. You'll have yeah. to fill me in later. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's actually take a look now at Helen in action as Queen Elizabeth meeting King Philip. Enjoy. How difficult was this film to make? Because uh, I know there was a, a, a long gestation period. You talk about make, uh, the idea first came in the hor- around season three of Horrible Histories. Mm. And in the time, uh, there's a couple of seasons of Yonderland as well. Was it tricky get off the ground in terms of making a, a low budget British comedy like this? When we first started speaking to people about it and kind of talking about the idea you say, the first line you say is you go, well it's set in Elizabethan England and they go, right, that's 10 million, go on <laughs> uh, and of course we wanted to do it as a, an entirely British film and to make a comedy you know, you, you, you're sort of looking at less than half of that as an overall uh, budget and so it could, I mean, it takes a long time and it is difficult, but we were really lucky in that really early on, uh, BBC Films totally un- got it. We, we told them a kind of version of our first draft of the story and they immediately got it, got what we were trying to do, got the tone of it. And um, so we, they kind of held our hand through the process of then the BFI coming on board and the other financiers and then going into you know, pre-production and getting our, our designer and our head of, heads of department. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a long process, but I think we had there were really brilliant people helping us along the way. Mm. Yeah, it's, um, it is a really difficult thing, I, <clears throat> and you know, there's a lot of luck along the way, but I think it was BBC realising, BBC Films realising, you know, we, when we went in to meet them, they knew the tone, and that was crucial. So they, they didn't have to, you know, we didn't have to sell them the tone of it. You said, it's, it's us lot, it's going to be like that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that helps a lot. I yeah. think if you go in with an idea, no matter how good it is, you've got to sort of try and sell what your thing is. Yeah. So we had a bit of a head start, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, and Martha, you know, sticking with the project all the way through from its inception to, to the end, is there a moment when you, you have to keep faith and hope that it will happen through different variations and different iterations of the, of the script? Uh, well, I think, yeah. I mean, I wasn't so privy to those sort of conversations because obviously yeah. Ben and Larry wrote the script, so they had more sort of creative control. But, I mean, yeah, the, we, we, we all wanted so badly for it to be made, but obviously it has taken a long time. So for it to be realised now is, is incredible, really. Mm. But also, you know, they find that there's, there are little compromises you make along the way. We had a whole se- uh, sequence that was taking place on a boat on the river. And when it came to the point when we were trying to... Um, we were about to film that. We were staying in York. It, there had been terrible rains, if you can imagine such a thing. And uh, the, the river flooded. So suddenly all, all of the kind of the street furniture along the banks of the river were underwater. Mm. So there were all sorts of obstacles. And they just said, right, no boats are allowed in the river. So we had to rewrite a sequence and put it on dry land sort of two days before we shot it. So you always have to roll with the punches a little bit because yeah. you can't fall behind and you can't spend more money. Yeah. But... Um, on the whole, a lot of the time you find those little sequences which are forced on you 
they're some of some of yeah. end up being some of the best bits. Weirdly. Also, um, Matt Bainton is a nightmare. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> uh, the biggest problem. Every day, you don't know whether he's going to be in a bad mood. Yeah, yeah. He's going to come out of his trailer. Nightmare. And Simon may or may not turn up. He may, up. may not turn up. <laughs> I mean, bearing in mind, today. you will have noticed that Simon was supposed to be. <laughs> um, yeah. One one day, he actually <clears throat> we were shooting something. And he plays one of the uh, Spanish uh, accomplices, assassins. And it was a big crowd scene where they're coming through the marketplace. I'm, I'm at the head. I have to meet a spy contact. And we were just shooting the scene, as you do with film. It's like taking it from different angles, shooting. And then on one take, he just wasn't there. <laughs> it was like, what? Where's Simon? He was I on mean, the toilet, it's, wasn't it's he? It's weird. The director didn't <laughs> notice. Was and he just came back and went, yeah, I've just... I've just been on the loo. <laughs> it's like, how did you... Well, you can't just walk off in the middle of a tape. But he had. Does he do that Amazing. often? Does he pop up unexpectedly? I mean, uh, he could he be might on the well. stage right he now. He might as well. <laughs> He's great. He He's never probably did. in there at yeah. the Genius Bar. <laughs> oh, I didn't realise we were doing it there. Oh, we're doing the thing. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's a unique human. He, he never just goes, oh, I'm late. He's always got a brilliant and genuine excuse. His best one so far was coming in late to a writer's meeting on Yonderland, I think, first series. And we went, where have you been? And he went, oh, I'm sorry, I had breakfast with Abba. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he had. True story, he had actually had breakfast with Abba. <laughs> two, two of Abba. Wow. <laughs> That's the booze. B.A. That's pretty amazing. Um, so in terms of uh, the script, and is there a lot of improvisation allowed on set? I mean, do, no. you, uh, yeah, do you tolerate it as writers? No, n- absolutely yeah. not. No, there is. I, there is, because there has to be... You've got to leave a little bit of space for it, but I think we were quite nervous with this. Also, with the, the, the script had been th- through so many drafts, and we had to shoot what was on the page, uh, but if there was time, we could just let it loosen up a bit. Mm. I think also, you know, a lot of the time improvisation is about getting the kind of the actor's take on things and making sure we're not missing a trick in terms of a gag or a little detail. And because we'd had table reads sort of throughout the process of developing the script, we'd taken notes from everyone as we did that. So a lot okay. of people's thoughts, you know, in ter- terms of Marth, Matt, Simon and Jim, that we kind of had their thoughts and included them in the writing process sure. as well. Martha, was that inv- invaluable, I guess, at the table read process? Uh, yeah, I think so. Definitely to um, establish our characters, and particularly for me and Matt, we did quite a lot of rehearsal with the director because it's very weird to have worked with somebody you know, for all these years and then suddenly have to be like, in love with each other. So <laughs> we, we, we thought we'd really struggle with that. And actually, the first day that we did the camera test, they asked us to just, just look at each other and we couldn't do it. <laughs> we were like, we've got to kiss at, at some point. How are we going to do this? But so we, we had you know, time to bash that out. And, and yeah, that was good. I not don't mean it. <laughs> Wrong thing to say. Yeah? We didn't bash anything oh, yeah. out. We... we uh, <laughs> Oh my God! That this is being filmed. I'll take a wrong turn. That, that's that's, that's um, not what happened. Martha, sorry. the only Martha <laughs> note Martha gave us, we said, "What do you think of the script?" And she said, "More lines, bigger trailer." That was it. <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> uh, we got one more clip now, uh, and this is uh, weirdly enough. I was on set for this. Uh, it was freezing cold. Um, <laughs> was, uh, this is a scene with Simon in it, um, dressed. Uh, well, I'm not going to give it away. Up. Do you want to explain, Larry, what this scene is, maybe? Um, this is uh, one of the f- early jobs that, that Bill gets coming to London. Like all uh, actors and writers coming to the big city, you don't you don't get into uh, the big theatre straight away. So he's taken a bit of a day job, and he's um, running into someone else or, uh, on his patch. Let's have a look. Yeah. Wow. Uh, didn't know. Didn't know he was going to do it like that <laughs> <laughs> until the day he did it. I like should point out the rest of the film is a searing political documentary. <laughs> that's that's not representative. That is William Shakespeare as you've never seen it before, dressed as a giant tomato. Um, the punnage in that scene and in the film alone is extraordinary. Um, have, uh, do you have a series of rejected puns? Do you have a series of we never rejected puns? a pun? <laughs> How dare you? I don't know. I, I think we like them, and also you know we were we just kind of homages to Shakespeare throughout, and he was such a lover of them. It sort of felt fitting to try and make... We didn't want to get bogged down in Shakespearean languages, and it's peppered through... Uh, Shakespearean language is peppered through the script, but we tried to keep it really uh, approachable, but in doing that, kind of have little touchstones of the way he worked, and one of those is definitely, you know, wordplay. 
and also we 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 tried quite hard to make um in the script to to very subtly change as matt uh, sorry as bill became the shakespeare we know his language just starts to change so he becomes more and more of the shakespearean uh lines start to come out and appear and he starts to become a little bit more serious than he is at the beginning absolutely i hope i hope that comes through because <laughs> yeah. we um, planned that <laughs> Uh, we have time now for about 75 questions from you guys. Um, if you want to ask questions, put your hands up, and we have roving microphones going around. There's one right here. My first question out of two is to Ben. Hi. Which is what you said on Twitter, which is, um, what is the score, Your Majesty? Ah. <laughs> Juice. Can you win the badge. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let me wrestle this off. Hang on. Is it? There's a little competition I was running. And everyone else is going, what the hell um, is yeah. going on? Let our, me just our, director this of, on. our director of photography on all of the films he, he works on, uh, every week at your shooting, he produces these little badge, which has kind of got a quote of the week from the script. And they became, everyone became obsessed with them. And I remember sort of thinking, oh, this is all a bit silly. By week four, on Tuesday of every week, you kind of go, Laurie, where's the badges? And you start to get uh, really obsessive about getting the full set. I've got, I've got the full set of badges, and Ben bought me a, a, a duplicate of the clapperboard, and they sit really proudly oh, wow. above my desk. I did, yeah. A lovely idea. Well, because we had a long journey together, and yeah, I love him did, a bit. Oh, that's, that's What did lovely. you get him, Larry? <laughs> Can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> And what did they get you, Martha? Anything? Nothing, absolutely Well, this nothing. is awkward. A job? Waiting. What do you get want? A job, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Big trailer, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> any more questions? Yes, please, over here, thank you. How did making the film compare with making the TV shows? So, for example, did you feel under more pressure to get things right, or perhaps it was more enjoyable, or did you find it easier because you had fewer light parts to remember? How did it compare? It's a very different process, because... Um, well, it's on the surface. It's not because you are just uh, filming from eight in the morning till seven at night, and it's and it's very high pressured. But um, I think with a feature film, I I certainly felt the pressure a lot more because it feels like the stakes are a little bit higher because you're really putting yourself out there saying, "Yeah, I can write a feature film." Yeah, we can make that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can't. Okay. In a series, every now and then, you might look at an episode and go, that's not our best one, but next week's great, and yeah. you only get one shot at a film. But on the flip side, you get... Um, we, we were filming about three scenes in a day, which for a f all of the people who normally worked on feature films were going, good God, we've got to film three scenes today. Because that seemed like an incredible pace. And God we were going, <laughs> we've only got to film three scenes today. Because on Horrible Histories, we'd be doing like, you know, six or seven. Same, same on Yonderland. So. Yeah. Uh, more pressure, but yeah, a little more time. On, um, on really high budget films, so we're talking on something like, say, Mission Impossible, they'll probably do a line in a day. I mean, that's, that's the kind of comparison. So Tom Cruise will walk into a room and go, all right. And, it, and then the whole day is of him walking into a room saying, all right. That's my favorite line of his from it that It is film. good, that bit in the latest Mission Impossible. Indelible. Right. It's hey, seared in my memory. Um, <laughs> and this film was filmed largely on location as well, wasn't it? I mean, did yeah. that make a difference as well, rather than just... I mean, you filmed Yonderland at Elstree in the studio conditions. I mean, was this markedly different for you? Yeah, it's a lot colder. Yeah. Uh, the plan, we, originally we were going to, we, the first thing we talked about with the way that the uh, schedule was going to work, we were going to film in summer in the south of France, yeah. and we ended up in February in North Yorkshire. <laughs> uh, nobody got fired for that, weirdly. How did that happen? Uh, just, just with the, the shifting schedule, but also as, as they started to find one Screen Yorkshire came on board who were brilliant and go and literally say, you know, what do you need? And we go, well, we need a medieval abbey. And they go, no problem. What else do you need? And we kept on finding, um, you know, they kept coming to us and saying, what about here? And at Bolton Castle, where yeah, they came and visited us, was one that was just this incredible find. And it's a, a ruined castle. And uh, the, the, whole, the main room is completely gutted. And so we built London inside a castle, which meant you've got these giant sort of uh, ancient walls, which look completely right for the period. But they're so, so tall, you, the camera never shoots over them. So you're never in danger of getting a, you know, a, a, a passing car or an electricity pylon. And so we just built all of London inside a castle. Yeah, and um, without, well, I'm not sponsored by the Yorkshire Tourist Board or anything, but... <laughs> We it, get a small cut. 
Yeah, you're right. No, but it is a... Uh, it's kind of a dreamland film location, because uh, particularly for period stuff, because it's all kind of still there, and you forget. You just go, oh, yeah. Because so we were looking around London for... There's a few places in London where you just can just about go, that's sort of original Tudor, you could shoot that. And we have done, down yeah, in yeah. Smithfield and stuff. Um, but the logistics of shooting in London are really difficult. Mm. I mean, it's mostly just sitting in cars going, why is the traffic so bad? <laughs> um, whereas in Yorkshire, we had this, you know, this whole county to run around in. Awesome. Uh, and Martha, what was that like uh, shooting up there in Bolton Castle? Largely yeah, it was enclosed. really cold. Yeah, really <laughs> cold. And I had layers and layers on because my costume was quite complex, like t- underskirts and all sorts of things. But I was still freezing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we had a nice time, didn't we? <laughs> we all had nice little on flats. It was like friends. Yeah. It was like it was like a weird <laughs> sitcom. We were staying in this one, all staying in yeah. one little town in different B and Bs, except for uh, me, Jim. Uh, Jim, Jim's wife was working on the production this year in costume. And, we ha- and uh, so Jim and his wife lived downstairs in this cottage and I lived upstairs. And then we'd kind of meet on the stairs and we'd go to each other's flats for dinner. And it was like a, a really unfunny sitcom. You guys. <laughs> Who was the noisiest? Well, let's just say Jim was there with his wife. And <laughs> say no more, Squire. Um, any more questions? Yes, please. What's your favourite scene from the film? My, I've got a couple. It's it's hard to sort of tell tell you without giving too much away. But the uh, there's an Inquisition scene uh, where um, uh, a a character uh, is kind of um, put under pressure, and it's the uh, denouement of a a building thread with a character I co- play called Lope and his device, um, his his torture device. Um, That's a good one. And that, that was really good. That was tremendously good fun. I think my favourite is, um, because I've seen the film about 648 times, so <laughs> I, I've had a lot of time to interrogate it, and uh, obviously you watch your own performance and go, oh, I could have done better there. But my favourite scene is uh, when I first meet the Earl of Croydon, uh, played by Simon, um, and I go into his house for the first time and try and uh, convince him to come on board with my dastardly plan. And it was the first time I played King Philip. Uh, it's the first scene we shot. And um, I, I, can, I remember the feeling. When I look at it, I remember the feeling of like, I was having such a good time. So that will always be very special. Uh, I think any time that the assassins and King Philip are around, there's, they're, those scenes are brilliant. But I, there's, I love a montage. And there's a montage scene. <laughs> I do. There's a montage scene in, in the film where... Um, Bill meets Christopher Marlowe, and, and Marlowe's going to help him write a play. Um, and, yeah, it's kind of the process of them, you know, drinking and writing. And, yeah, and it's just, I just think it's a really nice scene. And it's set to um, Dueling Banjos, the song from <laughs> yeah. Deliverance, yeah. but played on lutes. And it's one of my favourite thing, <laughs> musical it's moments. Yeah, it's that? brilliant. Uh, any more questions now? I think there was someone over here, wasn't there? I just wanted to ask Martha, with a, as an actress... You want to stick with this completely lunatic, mad group of... <laughs> <laughs> I can't seem to shake them off. <laughs> I would love to leave. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I can't get out. Um, no, I love, I love working with them. We, we've worked together for such a long time now. It's like, um, yeah, we're just great friends. And... I think I have to lower myself to their level very often <laughs> and become almost like a boy. Um, so, yeah, but we, we have such a lot of fun now. I, I wouldn't, unless they kicked me out, I wouldn't go anywhere. Don't we're, kick we're me still out. in talks. <laughs> yeah. Although Jim keeps dressing up as a woman, so I might lose my part. <laughs> uh, any more questions? I believe there were some hands up over here. I just wanted to know do you have like a writing process or do you just do a little bit whenever you can? Uh, well, w- for Bill, we did because um, uh, once we'd spoken with the BBC, uh, and they said, "Look, let's let's get a first draft up and running." We we were committed then to delivering uh, what is called, you know, obviously, your your first draft of the script. Uh, we then went away and had and spent a long time working up the story. And I think I was speaking to another person about this, um, another director. He said it takes about a year to get your story right and at first he always said yeah I did it in about a month I reckon it takes a year because uh, the film narrative is very complicated 
So we had to do that first, and then we sat down and started writing. So, um, but the writing process took about three weeks, and we did it in an office in Croydon, hence the Earl of Croydon. In fact, the, the, our first day writing on Bill was the day of the Croydon riots. Yep. And so I was on the train home and got a call from Ben going, <laughs> I, right? drove, I drove home and put the news on and went, oh, I, I left the toaster on. I left the toaster on. Uh, it was quite, it was like, oh, yeah, turn the, turn the telly on. There's, the Croydon's on fire. It was quite alarming. Uh, who types and who paces? I pace Larry types. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yes, please, there's a lady here in the front row. I was wondering what kind of percentage we can expect of original Shakespearean work and what percentage is tomfoolery? It's <laughs> a very uh, good question. You'll be unsurprised to know that there's a large percentage of tomfoolery. <laughs> uh, as Ben said earlier, as, as the film goes through, more and more genuine Shakespeare comes in. But there's an awful lot of, of references, quotes, references to things that happened in his life. Um, are kind of peppered throughout and we, we wanted to, uh, amongst all the tomfoolery, kind of tease an interest in Shakespeare and I think hopefully you get to the end of this very silly 90 minutes and, and do feel encouraged to want to learn a little more, watch a play. Um, we, we hope that we're kind of encouraging a bit of uh, love of Shakespeare in amongst all the idiocy. Where did you stand on Shakespeare answer. before you, you wrote it? Were you, were you fans? Did you have a yeah, big knowledge? Or? Not a big knowledge, and, that's, no. and that was uh, good because uh, my education of Shakespeare uh, at school was r really bad. I had the, had, the, had the usual experience of a really bored English teacher reading The Merchant of Venice. Well, it's about a merchant. I, I, I don't know. Um, and then we went to see a production which wasn't very good, and, and so that's not very engaging. So... Doing the research of this, we, we suddenly found ourselves in the Globe. We went to the Globe to watch a production. And that suddenly got me into reading the plays again. And then um, for ease, I, I, I watched a lot of adaptations um, that are you know, uh, made into films. And just fell in love with it again. And I just thought, this is, I could get lost in this. It's so wonderful. Um, it was quite handy. Ben, so you, you got uh, into it more deeply <laughs> than I did. But kind of intentionally, yes. we wanted to have enough grounding to know what we were talking about, but not go both of us so deep down into the rabbit hole that you may end up making a film just for nine other Shakespeare enthusiasts. We <laughs> yeah, wanted to yeah. make a film for yeah. the uninitiated, potentially a film about Shakespeare for people who don't care about Shakespeare. Um, I, I think yeah, that's kind of what we set out to and do. As, and as Larry says, it would be really lovely if people watch it and go, I might go and, um, I might go and watch a bit of Shakespeare, actually, it sounds good. Um, because... Uh, I, I, when you go and watch Shakespeare again, you think, God, this is, I, I don't, oh, it's so hard. And then suddenly something happens where you suddenly hear the rhythm of it and you start to understand it. It's quite remarkable. Uh, obviously, go to a really good production. Don't go to a yeah, six-form production. My, which is what I did. I, my first production I saw of Shakespeare was when I was in, uh, I, think in like, I think it was about 15. It was a school trip. And it was uh, in Eastbourne. Uh, and it was <laughs> one of the guys from Blake 7 playing Macbeth. Yes, I'd like started, to see that. I he started every scene that. like this. <laughs> <laughs> nobody yeah. came back for the second half. And I mean, nobody came back for the second half. Has anyone um, seen the Cum Cumberbatch Hamlet? Cumber Hamlet. Ham Hamber Hamberbatch. No one yet? No, no one yet? <laughs> we'll all get on a bus and we'll go after this. Yeah, we'll yeah. have a big group outing yeah, and it'll yeah. all be fun. Uh, Martha, you a big Shakespeare fan? Uh, I can't say I was at school. Um, I, I loved Taming of the Shrew, um, but no, I wasn't. It wasn't my. It wasn't my go-to. Absolutely not. But I, d I went to RADA, so I, I did have to dabble in it. But, um, but it. it <laughs> you really have to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whoops! <laughs> Just drop that down. There. I was saying about my classical <laughs> training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so rude. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's not. It's not. It's not my favourite thing ever. So, have any of you been in a Shakespeare play? No. Not no. professionally. No. Okay. If Shakespeare's no, here and he wants to write something for the guys, <laughs> <laughs> please get in touch afterwards. Uh, I think we've got time for maybe one or two last questions, if there's anyone. Hello. Can I ask what oh. your next project is, and can I have a job, please? <laughs> uh, no, no and yes, yes in that order. <laughs> uh, we're working on uh, a couple of uh, scripts, uh, neither of which, were, contractually, neither of which we're allowed to talk about, which is a really dull thing to do, isn't it? I'm yes. very sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you, you can have a job, but uh, you would not like your colleagues. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Martha, what are you working on next? Say again. What are you working on next? What's uh, your next well, project? Uh, well, I don't know <laughs> what we're working <laughs> on next, boys. Um, no, I've, I'm you. actually doing a long running um, a thing for DreamWorks at the moment uh, for Noddy. Um, for, I think it's going out on Nickelodeon, but I'm voicing lots of lots of the characters in that, and I can currently be seen in Doctor Foster on a Wednesday night on BBC One. <laughs> <laughs> She's nice. very good tonight. Um, but no, otherwise, I think projects together at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, um, you know, we are working on another project, and hopefully, um, people will like Bill, and there's an appetite for it, and we want to keep making. I mean, I'd love to just keep making uh, comedy films. I mean, that would be a dream come true. Might be a good note in which to end. Thank you so much for coming. Thank uh, thanks for your questions. Thanks, of course, Martha Howe Douglas, Ben Wilbond, and Lawrence Rickard. Thank you so much.